Okay, I've been invited here today to talk a little bit about public relations. And I guess more in my area, which is providing public relations services to clients of an advertising agency. Now, that's not to say that all of our clients are only advertising clients. We've got public relations clients as well. And I usually come into a, to your public relations class and say, the book's not going to help. It's all from experience. But I recently just completed my accreditation in Public Relations Society of America, which is like passing your master's. Six hours of written, half an hour of orals, and I have your book memorized. So I can say that there is a lot of credibility to the book, but the actual day-to-day -day working that's w it's going to help you, you know, in being a public relations practitioner. The book gives a lot of good principles, a lot of good ideas, but I want to take you a little bit behind the scenes and show you some of the things we do, what we have to need to know, why Walter Lippmann's barriers of communication are not necessarily effective in our day-to-day -day work plans. Okay, one of the things um, Cutlip and Center does is give you about five or six different pub p definitions of public relations. And there's not one that I can say that's really more effective than the other. The best thing to know about public relations is that it's a planned, coordinated effort to generate awareness for a client, a product, or a service. Okay, public, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Public relations can mean lots of things to different people. And I know because I usually get phone calls daily, people who are looking for a job. I like people I think I should be in public relations. I sell good, I should be in public relations. But that's not all there is to it. Um, it depends on what avenue or, or who you're talking to about the needs. In my field, and that's in the advertising or as a public relations counselor, we need to be able to do more than just get along with people. Um, it helps when you have to work with the media and when you have to talk to your client. But what you've got to be able to do is to realize, first of all, what the problem is that you're trying to solve, how you're going to solve it, who you're going to tell it to, and through what medium, i.e., television, radio, newspaper, whatever. Now, I work on a wide variety of accounts. And that's why it makes my job a little bit more difficult, different than, say, Shirley Wills from University of Texas at San Antonio. Whereas Shirley concentrates on the overall public relations efforts for the University of Texas San Antonio school system, all their activities, I have to do the same thing for a variety of clients. Frost Bank, Stanley Smith Security, Carquist. Uh, which is the national chain of auto parts stores, um, Arco Comfort Products, a division of Atlantic Richfield, special projects for American Express, um, lots of little things here and there, blood banks, uh, land developers, you know, co commercial real estate brokers. So we've got to be aware of all the latest industry trends, what's happening, and how it's going to affect the city of San Antonio and our client. That's why I'm saying our job is a little bit more difficult sometimes than those individuals who are in a corporate public relations type activity. Now, um, I was laughing. A while back when I came in and was talking about some of my clients and, and the diversity of them, I'm talking about large bank holding companies, offshore drilling companies, Texas Longhorn cattle. So it's not like you are... Um, really stuck in my business in a certain type of industry. We get to know a little bit about everything, which is kind of nice. We get to work on rodeo circuses. We also get to hold dinners for uh, President Reagan and former President Ford. So you meet a lot of different people, which is really nice. But let's talk about some of the things that go into making up a public relations program. I was, I was showing Joe, I put together something for the account executives or the account supervisors at my advertising agency. These are the individuals that are responsible for developing the overall marketing plan. And I've got a three-page list, more than 65 topics, of some of the things that we can do. Okay, now, you understand from reading the book, of course, that you do news releases, feature stories, television appearances, 
Like I said, it's a lot different being behind it this way than back there. Um, newsletters, internal and external, um, special guest appearances, special events, dinners, almost anything that you can imagine, we do. And that's sometimes the problem in public relations, is you don't imagine enough. And I want to go ahead and take you through kind of an activity that I did. It was more of a um, nonprofit giving contribution by the agency where we provided my services as a public relations practitioner to the Arthritis Foundation at no charge. And here's what we did. We wanted to have a fundraising effort. I'm going to move over here for the cameras. For the Arthritis Foundation. And we were going to have it at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. And we wanted to have a special guest speaker. Okay? Through so going through the National Arthritis Board, we found out that there were several people that would make themselves available to come to San Antonio because of their interest and commitment to the services of the Arthritis Foundation. It got down to the point where we had a choice between Mean Joe Green and Betty Ford. Okay? Um, Financially speaking, we felt that Betty Ford would be a much bigger draw than being Joe Green. At $250 a couple, that's pretty understandable, especially around election time. And uh, she had a little bit more involvement with arthritis than Mean Joe, in that she herself had been a sufferer for the past 16 years. Uh, Mrs. Ford, unfortunately, had been a sufferer of a lot of things, but was a brave enough woman during her term as First Lady to come out and speak about it. So we went ahead and set up with the Arthritis Foundation to have Mrs. Ford come here. Now, I'm not going to go into all the activities that went into planning the dinner, okay, and contacting all the people here in San Antonio and addressing all the invitations and all the little things because there, there was a committee of about 50 of us that worked on this and I was lucky to work with people like former Mayor McAllister and his daughter-in-law Edith McAllister and David Sachs and Jesse Oppenheimer, a lot of big name people in San Antonio who are committed to doing this. So one of the first things that we had to do, and this is part of being a public relations practitioner, is to develop an invitation list. Okay? Can y'all read this? I can't tell here. Okay, now the invitation list is comprised, first of all, of benefactors, you know, of the uh, Arthritis Foundation here in San Antonio, and also those individuals who are noted for being large givers in San Antonio, corporations, individuals, and you have to understand at $125 a plate, even though it's tax deductible, it's not something that I normally could have afforded to go to either. So we went ahead and developed an invitation list. And this is a crucial part of being a public relations person, knowing who the people are in San Antonio and how to reach them. We probably have drawers of uh, names and addresses of people here in San Antonio so that we can target certain events, projects to these key people. We have them on the social index. We have them on the biz business index. It depends on the need. Okay. We have the invitation list. Then, okay, we also did the invitations. You know, and although public relations is a communications effort, it also involves a knowledge, in many cases, of how to handle print media. And that means working with the printer, developing the type, uh, the letter face, whatever, to get the invitations done. In this case, um, I went ahead and got all the t typography, the paper, and the printing donated for no charge, which helps a great deal when it probably would have been the equivalent of about $25,000 just in printing alone. This was for invitations and uh, I can't even think what we, we called them. We had kind of like a pamphlet that we handed out that talked a little bit about the Arthritis Foundation and had a picture of Mrs. Ford and a story about her involvement in the Arthritis Foundation. Okay, we have the invitation list and we have the uh, invitations and pamphlets figured out. Now keep in mind, 
this is an unusual project in that it was in January and we started doing this in November. Normally, we like to start doing this in February to really be able to plan. But our most important thing was to be able to determine who we wanted to reach, how we were going to reach them, okay, and get that money or get it donated in advance. The next part of my project was a planned public relations effort. I had somewhat of a disadvantage in planning a special event here in San Antonio in that I didn't have Mrs. Ford here. Uh, she wasn't available to go to the television stations or to do a television public service announcement or to call into the radio stations and, and do live interviews. It was also, she didn't have the time to do this. So one of the things we did in planning a total public relations effort, and I think this is like in chapter four or five of Cutlip and Center, was to determine a timetable. But part of this timetable depended upon the availability of Mrs. Ford. We found out that she really would only be arriving that day and that she agreed to two telephone interviews in San Antonio. Only two. That's it. So where planning comes in. One has to decide through all the media sources here in San Antonio who are the two people that you want to reach. Okay? That was a little bit difficult. So what we did is we worked for one newspaper. We did it from the city side, which is the news side. Okay? For the other local newspaper, we did it from the society side. Made arrangements, private phone number, private office, for these reporters to call Mrs. Ford in advance of the special event okay, and interview her about Arthritis Foundation, about her arthritis suffering, and about the upcoming event. And we're also talking about a planned PR effort. We're trying to do two things in this. One is we're trying to generate attendance at the event because we're raising funds for, for programs here in San Antonio. But for the rest of the world, which is more like me, we're trying to generate awareness. Like I said, we can't all afford to pay $125, but we might, by knowing about the special program and what arthritis does here in San Antonio, be able to send in a $5 or $10 check. We had a two-prong objective, okay? So we have the planned PR effort. Okay, so we have the uh, phone interviews. I, I don't even know if y'all can read this, but we're going to try that, okay? Now, normally for a special event here in San Antonio, we would have a television public service announcement. But seeing that I didn't necessarily have some slides or Mrs. Ford, because I don't normally like to have what we call a talking head, we like to have some visuals, we had to forego a television public service announcement. But we did, in fact, produce radio PSAs. PSA is public service announcement, announcements, not Pacific Southwest Airlines. <laughs> it's kind of hard for us to get used to that. Okay. We also developed, in our mind, a list of news releases that we would distribute on a regular basis. I'm going to put that up here. And I'm just going to put NR. And I developed about three or four news releases. And remember, in writing a news release, you have to be telling a story or something newsworthy or something of interest to the general public. Okay, now we've got four news releases here that we're going to write. Can you all tell me maybe some of the topics that I used? Remember, angles. Think about the angles. Okay, I'll start out with the first one. Uh, we'll put one. That there will be an event. There will be a special fundraising dinner honoring former First Lady Betty Ford here in San Antonio. 
Okay. Second, remember, we're trying to generate awareness and we're trying to generate attendance and everything we can. Okay. That's another one. We have a what is, you know, arthritis um, services, etc. What services programs does the Arthritis Foundation provide? As a matter of fact, it worked out very well for us. At this time, the Arthritis Foundation had just given a grant to a researcher at the University of Texas Health Science Center for a certain study that could, in, a, in effect, if it did work, <coughs> excuse me, wipe out arthritis, muscular dystrophy, lupus, and a great deal of other um, types of diseases that they think are hereditary. Okay? Now, Let's think of some more. What other things do we have? How about that former President Ford will be here? That was an iffy all along, but we found out that he was going to be here. Let's get the Republicans there, right? Okay. Another thing. Okay. How about those prominent San Antonio San Antonians who are contributing their time as committee members who are involved in, in getting this off the ground. Okay. I don't think I'm going to use this anymore, so y'all are just going to have to listen. Um, now, another thing that I did, and it happened to work out very well, and it wouldn't normally fall under your news releases, but that was that January happened to be National Arthritis Month. Okay? So I worked with uh, Mayor Cisneros in proclaiming it National Arthritis Week in San Antonio, complete with the proclamation, um, working with the mayor and having him come to the dinner and present the proclamation at the dinner. That's another part of it is public appearances. We also had um, Governor Clements and his wife. I think. Now these are some of the activities that went into the public relations effort. In addition, okay, you get to be kind of a jack of all trades. I don't want to scare you, but, but you do learn. I developed an audiovisual that was presented that night um, using materials provided through the Arthritis Foundation. I wrote and produced a script and a three projector audiovisual presentation that included Mrs. Ford and other individuals that had benefited from the programs at the Arthritis Foundation. This was shown at the dinner. Okay. One of the most interesting aspects of doing this is planning for the arrival of your guests. Same thing with, with uh, Mr. Ware. He planned for my arrival here went to pick me up, brought me to the studio, you know, explained to me a little bit about the class, made sure I had a bulletin board because he knows that I, a blackboard I like to write when I, when I talk sometime. The same ho holds true when you're planning a special event, be it a local client or in this case a national celebrity like the Fords. We had to plan in advance how we were going to get them down here, which required private jets and securing their donations from, from local companies. They requested three limousines, which we had to find, to carry themselves, their staff, and their luggage. Um, in visiting out of town, the Fords like to have certain things in their room. They like soda water, Perrier, fresh fruit, and that's something that you think to ask. How can we make you more comfortable? And then I said, well, is there anything special that they would like? And as a matter of fact, the social secretary said, yes. We'd like some almond toffee candy and butter pecan ice cream. <laughs> That's part of the job. You get the almond toffee candy, and you make sure that the Hyatt Regency has butter pecan ice cream available for them whenever they need it. Little things. Then you have to meet with the Secret Service for two days in advance and plan out the route that the Fords are going to take. They'll stay here in San Antonio. No reporters are allowed to meet them at the airport. OK? 
okay? This is, this is difficult. I'll get to that later. No reporters allowed there, all right? Now, I don't know if y'all heard about Sunday when Vice President Bush was here. They closed down a great deal of San Antonio, Bandera area, and 281. Because of a lot of the threats that have been made on political figures, they had to make sure nothing would happen. In this case, we didn't close down San Antonio, but we did have a staff of like 200 Secret Service. That's a lot of people. Okay, So we're working with these gentlemen in developing what we think, of course, knowing San Antonio would be the best route for them to come through. Then comes the uh, planning of the actual rooms. Where are they going to stay? What are the exits? How secure is it? This means, in doing this kind of job, you change clothes, put on your jeans, and you go up and down the back stairwells, through the crawls, and everything to make sure that this is a secure location for the Fords. It also means checking all of the uh, furniture, the lamps, the overhead connections, make sure there are no bu bugging devices. Doing the same thing in the bathrooms, taking apart the toilets, taking out the faucets, making sure that there is nothing in there that is a hazard to them. You know, it's kind of funny. I had not worked in such a involved atmosphere as this. But these are some of the things that you have to do, especially preparing for key political figures. Um, okay, we got all this taken care of. Now, as part of this dinner, okay, we're having here, we've pretty much talked about publicizing it and this and that. We have to keep in mind that security is a key factor, and everyone has to have cards to get in. It's almost like reservation cards. Yes, you paid your money, you may come in. And with any type of special event, be it Yul Brenner coming to San Antonio or the Fords, there's always going to be some type of cocktail party for friends of these individuals or influentials here in San Antonio. And we held such a cocktail party. Those individuals coming into the cocktail party had to have a blue card. And the Secret Service gave me the responsibility of making sure that everybody had that blue card. And this blue card was given only to those people who were invited to come and very, very select media personalities to be in attendance. We didn't want you know, every reporter in San Antonio there, just a few. The rest of the reporters could cover the dinner. So people are coming in and out you know, with their, their cards. And like I said, my job was to sit there with two Secret Service people okay, in my formal outfit checking cards. And I found a woman who didn't have a card. And I told the Secret Service, and I had her carted away. It was Rita Clements. Um, I was then kind of relieved of my job, but it does go to show that they did physically pull someone up and take them out because of a threat. They did let her back in because the other part of the Secret Service statewide realized who she was. It also shows how you can goof up being in public relations. But you know, this is just, these are some of the things that you have to do in a public relations effort. I wanted to do it more on a large scope instead of saying, here's how you write a news release because the inverted, you know, pyramid, triangle, whatever, that's fine, you know? And you can learn that from reading the book or you can learn that from, from uh, not from reading the book, you can learn it from your journalism classes. But what you cannot learn from the book is some of the things that you have to do to plan a successful event. Okay? Um, there's no way anyone here in San Antonio knows everything because it's experience that, you're, that is your best teacher. You know? um, I tried to be well read, but the more I thought about it, how many times is Rita Clement's picture in the newspaper? But I should have known who she was. That was my fault. I should have known in advance who she was so I at least could have made her comfortable in coming in. Instead, I get her kicked out. But um, here, are the, here are the things. Now this keeps in mind, you know, some of the different activities that you can do. Now we've done a great deal many other things in, uh, in your effective public relations, their uh, list of things. Let me just run over some of the, the different opportunities that are available. We call them public relations communications tools. Okay, we've talked about, um, we put this under a news release, but we can also do a feature article, this what is, services, etc placing feature articles 
in either newspapers or magazines. We also write books. We write speeches. You can't tell by, by mine. I ad lib, but I do write speeches for clients. Okay? We do do ceremonies, special presentation ceremonies for people. I have done commercials, public serve, television public service announcements, but also commercials. Uh, we do conferences. We teach courses. We do direct mail. Not necessarily just an invitation, okay, or invitation list, but we do develop almost like advertising direct mail campaigns. We write editorials. Um, this is very interesting. A lot of the editorials you see in your newspaper are, in fact, written by public relations professionals here in San Antonio. Um, I don't normally read everything in the editorial page myself, but I developed some editorials for the recent Muscular Dystrophy Association Telethon. And there they were again, in the express, in the light, verbatim, you know, as provided by me. That is my job, to provide the media with news and information. We hope that they will use everything we write, and we are not at all offended, okay, when they lift it up verbatim. That is our job. You know, plagiarism is, in this case, is good for us. Um, what are some of the other things we do here? We do house publications, identity programs, information centers, uh, trade show exhibits, um, recordings. I talked about audiovisual. I also can handle a sound studio. Pamphlets, newsletters, special events. That's an example. Okay, Sunday supplements, tapes. We also help produce television shows. Okay, and I'm talking about like more like issues and answer shows. Most recent example was the road bond issue. We worked with Channel 12 in uh, one of their Sunday shows on a Thursday night, actually helped write and produce the script for that show for viewing the next Sunday. These are just a few, and there's no way that I can tell you everything I know, no matter how small, you know, in, in the span of this classroom, or show you everything that public relations is. And the thing is that I tell the people in my department that you are limited only by yourself. There are so many things that you can do. And if you think that public relations is just writing a news release, doing a feature story, and a couple of newsletters, you're wrong. And if you think that you can put a program together, a superb program, say for a bank, and then when you get a new client, that's a manufacturer and move that bank pro program over to your manufacturer and just change a couple of words, you're wrong. Because each public relations program has a goal. Each has a different need and they each require specialized programs to meet these needs. Now, like I said, something that would work for a Frost Bank certainly wouldn't work for Texas Longhorn Breeders Association, okay? Different strategies, different audiences, different services. But that's important to keep in mind. Um, daily, we get requests from account executives at our agency or from clients, can you do this? And a lot of times you just smile and say, yes, I can. You go back to your office and say, how on earth am I going to get this done? I have never heard of this. I don't know what I'm doing, da, 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 da. That's another part of your job, is research. That's probably number three in effective public relations. But they tell you a lot about research. I'm not talking about your formal, secondary research, da, da, da. It means getting to know what your client needs. First of all, if you don't know already, you need to have all the background on your client anyway what they provide, how are they perceived in San Antonio, um, what have they done, what are their needs, and you need to research this thoroughly. We have stacks and stacks and files and files, and my secretary almost doesn't have room anymore to work, of information on all of our clients, on different industries, so that we will always be aware. The reading in my business, well, let me put the reading that's required to do my job is unbelievable. I'm talking about Fortune, Wall Street Journal, 
Time, Newsweek, Forbes, Money, Inc., uh, American Banking Association, whatever all the trades are, you need to read everything. And whether, in fact, I'm going to editorialize for a minute, whether you get into my job or in any other type of job, the more well-read you are, the better you can do. Okay, it gives you a much broader scope on what's going on. I found, and I've worked, Joe told you, I worked internally for a, a corporation. And I found that some of the people that I worked with, scope was very limited. They had only been in one industry. They only concentrated on doing the things that they needed to do. But they didn't go outside. Uh, they were so used to just always talking to the same editors and always doing this and always doing that that they neglected different audiences that they had. Okay? When you think about what you're doing, you have to realize that there's a variety of people you need to reach. Okay, let's, let's take Frost Bank, for example. Okay? And let's talk about who their audiences are. We're not going to talk about programs and things like that. I just I want y'all to work with me in developing who their audiences are. Name one audience. Let's see if we can turn this over. No. Anybody can name an audience? Pardon me? Okay. The public at large. I'm going to expand on that for just a minute. And the reason we're going to say the public at large is because Frost Bank is a very large institution here in San Antonio. And as such, as a major employer and a major business, they need to establish themselves as community leaders. Therefore, they should always be involved in philanthropic activities. Okay? They should be open and accessible to the public. And they need to help support the growth of San Antonio, which they've been doing very well. And that, that is without my help. They've been doing that for years. Okay, let's name another audience. This is the public at large. Pardon me? Businesses, okay. Now, business is also two-prong, okay? One is we want to encourage other businesses to do community support. That's part of being on the top, okay? community support. I think I'm going to have to give this up. And the other is you want to reach businesses to get their business, right? Okay. We've got a couple more audiences. Who are they? Okay. How about your customers? You need to make your customers aware of the philosophy of the bank, the services provided at the bank, the new services provided at the bank. From present customers, you get more customers. Let them know that they can do their safety deposit box, they can do their trust, they can do their wills, they can do their loans, they can do estate planning, all at one place. Okay? So this is a public that you have to reach. This is a very involved public relations program if we were to go in depth. But I want to show you the audiences so you can understand everything that's involved. Okay, we have customers. We've got at least two more audiences. That's right. Employees. And this, probably one of your most important audiences the employees of a large or even a small organization are basically your goodwill ambassadors to everybody else. They're the ones that promote the image of the company. They're the ones that answer questions. They've got to be fully aware of everything that you're doing, of everything that you're passing along to customers, businesses, the general public. Okay? These are basically your spokespeople. Also, involvement in the company. You have to make sure that you are making them aware of their advancement, uh, benefits, you know, uh, profit sharing, whatever type of programs. It's an internal communication program as well. 
you've got to please the public, which is the employees. How about another? This is a real difficult one, not only in, in guessing, but also doing. Shareholders. You know. um, financial public relations is a very interesting business. I almost, almost was going to say phenomena, because there are so many different aspects of it. You need to generate awareness, positive visibility of the company to your shareholders, to potential investors, to the media, to the major stock brokerage firms, whatever. You are also regulated by the Security and Exchange Commission. There are certain things you can do and cannot do in public relations. Okay. Um, one of the, the most important things in doing something like this is anything that will affect your stock, one way or another, be it to rise or to fall, has to be disclosed within 24 hours. A lot of people don't realize that. But the timely disclosure thing, otherwise, you can, in effect, have your stocks be taken off the stock market. Anything that will affect the prices has to be announced. But this gets very involved, and there are a lot of things that you have to do in here. But here are just some of the publics that are involved. And of course, the media. <coughs> you know, you have to work with the media. You might want to uh, develop a, a program whereby you establish Frost Bank as the authority for financial matters here in San Antonio, so that when um, new laws pass or the prime goes down, that they will call representatives of Frost Bank for a quote. That's always, that's an impact, because you keep seeing Frost Bank, Frost Bank, so-and-so from Frost Bank, so-and-so said this. That's another way to generate awareness. They've done a very good job. It's, it's very fortunate, too, that Frost Bank is, you know, the, the largest bank in San Antonio and the largest bank holding company. But these are just some of the things that are involved. I could probably go on for another week talking about public relations and giving you examples and things like that, but, you know, that's not why I'm here. I was just supposed to give you kind of an overview of what I do and some of the things that are involved. Sometimes when I talk to, to students getting out of school that want to get into public relations, some of them are a little nervous at the prospect of the many hats you wear. Um, I'm talking here about communications tools you use. We we'll also have to use diplomacy in working with clients, hand-holding sometimes in working with clients, running and getting things done. You know, I didn't even talk about deadlines or time frames or time schedules, but I think that you're probably aware of, of how those can affect you know, public relations or your day-to-day -day life. This is just kind of an overview. I hope I filled my time. If not, I can talk a little bit longer. Thank you. Could you touch on controversy and bad news? Controversy and bad news? How, how do you, how do you the Tylenol problem. <laughs> OK. Um, it's funny. I set up that program for my department the other day. Kind of said, OK, we're going to have a brainstorming session. I took everyone out of the office for five hours and said, if you were the public relations people, okay, for Johnson & Johnson or Tylenol, how are you going to handle this? And I'm not going to repeat what they said as, as the first thing. We should go, oh my god. Um, in working with a company, okay, you have to plan. And, and I keep saying plan, plan, plan. It says in your book, plan, plan, plan. And you don't realize how important it is. And I don't mean just plan your activities. I mean, plan a crisis management program. Okay, this can happen anywhere. Um, it can happen if your employees go on strike, if someone dies, okay, if uh, the cyanide problem with the, the Tylenol. There has to be some type of advanced plan. There usually isn't. That's all I can say. There usually isn't. I personally feel that Tylenol has done an exceptional job in their public relations efforts. Um, one of the first things you do, now please realize that I have never worked 
in quite a level as you know pu public relations for Johnson and Johnson but in developing what I would do because that's what I did as soon as we found out about it I went home and said what would I do if that were my client because you never know when it might happen and I found that some of the things I thought of they've done there's no way of knowing everything that they did okay first thing you do is you call management together as soon as possible i.e. five minutes ten minutes one hour you get everyone there and that includes legal counsel you inform the media keep in mind that you're supposed to have all these people that are helping you okay you have someone who is going to inform the media that we will get back to them with a statement or with an announcement within an hour the thing is to keep the media informed don't hold them at bay don't say no comment don't be evasive give all the information that you can as honestly and openly as possible okay you're in the management meeting by then you should have your legal counsel in there of course the people that are in production president da 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 you will best determine what happened how might it have happened you know in some cases what could be done to prevent it in in the Tylenol case that's not quite as easy at the moment but if it was some type of injury to an employee on a plant or location what could have done, been done to it? okay how many people are affected okay and are we working in cooperation with the FBI you know the police da 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 da, da. okay everybody you know is going to be answering this question and the entire time the public relations person is taking notes getting all this information down okay you come out of the meeting and you should have a statement prepared but you should have one spokesperson and one spokesperson only that can be your president your executive vice president whatever but this has to be determined you do not want too many people making statements things can get misconstrued people can be contacted that do not know what's going on but you almost send out a blanket of silence okay. not that you're not cooperative to the media but that you want to make sure that they're going to reach the informed sources at all time okay this is kind of how they did it and then you go into the working <clears throat> and this is probably these people probably did not sleep okay for about a week you have to coordinate all the reports all the activities what's happening what happened in the distribution points you know how could it have happened could the cyanide from the testing plant over there get six thousand you know miles over mixed into your distribution area what happened okay if as you read along you'll probably see that they really have done well uh, they had the recall you know they invited the things to come back it probably will hurt Tylenol they had 35 percent share of the market that's a lot they're being taken off um, because of the uh, unstableness of our society I think all over-the-counter drugs now are in some type of danger we're all right now in some type of danger it seems between the visine or this or that and we're going to see a complete change in the packaging of materials um, no longer will you be able to just kind of go in and buy you know eye drops that twist like this they're going to be in sealed packets and if they're not sealed when you uh, get them you do not buy them everything might go behind the counter again it's hard to say but legislation is going to change it the FDA is going to change it and it's going to have a very difficult financial impact on not only the companies but the consumers as well we're going to see probably a 20% increase in all the products that we use because of all the things that they're going to have to do to make it safe for our consumption or use. Um, controversy, there's so much. I was just thinking, I was given, I recently took an accreditation. I think I mentioned it's like getting your master's in public relations. And I took a crisis management um, program. It was a three-hour written program that I had to do and that was that there was going to be a rock concert and they had just 
seating, general admission, no reserve. And everybody showed up four hours in advance. And the staff wasn't in place, and people started surging forward, and the door broke open, and people went in, and five people were killed, and 15 were trampled, and fortunately an assistant manager pressed a button, and you know all the doors opened, but no one was there. What do you do? You've got five people murdered, you know, trampled to death, and this and that, and I just kind of went, what a mess. You know, that's how you started off. And you start to realize, in a way, how fortunate you are in, in my business that I don't necessarily have to do that. But I might, and things like that can happen. And I have some very good friends here in San Antonio. Um, Marv Harris at Lackland, uh, in charge of public information, in one week had, okay, listen to this, this is public relations. They had the, the Tylenol lots, remember, the same supposedly poison lots at Lackland. He had a fire at Werfeld Hall Medical Center, and he had one of the recruits die of a heart attack. Okay, Now think about what kind of management planning you have to undertake. Just imagine if all of this had happened and you didn't have a plan, okay, all within a day of each other, what are you going to do? The military, one of the best prepared planned. They are the best public relations practitioners in the world, without a doubt. Um, I've learned this from, from working with them, from studying them, listening to this. They can handle these kind of problems. But you have to realize you never know what's going to happen. And you almost have to think of the worst that can happen. I mean, in my mind, and I was thinking how morbid, you know, heaven forbid this should happen. But what if some crackpot took a shot at Ford while I had that dinner. What was I going to do? Um, my husband, fortunately, has <laughs> served in public relations, and we had developed a public relations crisis program that we had, you know, stuffed in his pants. Should anything happen, okay, you know, he had him in his pants, should anything happen that we could take control? You just don't know. You don't want to think about those things. But if it happened, someone has to have a level head. And if you can imagine the screaming and the yelling and this and that, it can be quite, you know, quite dangerous, not only for individuals, but for the company, communications, whatever. Um, that's about all I have on crisis management, except for that you've got to have it and to stress the need for a plan. Does anybody have any questions? What would you have done if he was shot? What would I have done if he was shot? Okay, uh, I would probably have immediately gone to the microphone, okay? Because the first thing we have is we've got Secret Service all over the place, okay? Gone to the microphone. My husband had the responsibility to see how he was doing, okay? Then, if he was not doing well, we were going to find out where he was going. We were going to grab three people in the media that we knew personally that we would give them responsibility, say, call in the story, but you're going to be in charge of this. Okay. Um, from there, you have to tell, stay calm, get down, don't move. The first thing that you'll ever notice, I, I hate to say this because I've been there before, so when there's a gunshot, people don't go down, they go out. Okay. That is very dangerous for two reasons. One, you run the risk of getting shot yourself, and two, is you run the risk of getting hurt or hurting someone else by the trampling. It's mass confusion. People don't know. You get down, you lay down, you stay out of the way, you hide, whatever. Secret Service is there. They're going to take care of it. All of the exit entrances are sealed off. That I knew in advance. We didn't have to worry about that. Okay, there was no way that they could get through. Then we had to have a program whereby we were going to get reports out on what was happening here, what was happening there. Part of the crisis management program, we also, if all the TV stations and newspapers hadn't shown up, fortunately they did, we have all the night numbers, uh, how to get straight to the newsroom. Start pulling out those quarters, you start making the phone calls. You set up a, a phone bank through the, the management of the Hyatt Regency, you know, to get some information. You've got a press information room, you get someone over to the hospital and get that done. Didn't want it to happen, you know. And it's, it's just kind of in your mind, but you have to just suddenly say, what am I going to do? Because it does happen. And uh, 
It can happen at the strangest times. You know, I've had clients call and say, you know, I think I have been libeled, you know, by a certain individual, and I want to make a public press conference, and I want to say what a SOB this person is. And I go, you can't do that. You know, I want to do this, and I'm going to do it now, you know, that kind of thing. You have to remember, too, and this is part of the law, <laughs> you cannot say anything that is slanderous, you know? And if it is on the tape, if I were to say something right here, I could say something slanderous about Joe or whomever and uh, be prosecuted for it. It's another thing. Legalities, that's a part of our job. Okay? Had to make sure that they didn't do it. Had to, to calm them down, show them that their interests would best be served by writing uh, an editorial or really it was more of a, uh, a positioning statement and sending it to the newspaper, whereby, one, they wouldn't be crying wolf. A lot of people cry wolf and hold press conferences. You don't want to do that. And two, that they don't really put themselves in a position where they could afford to lose a bond issue, lose business, or get thrown in jail, or be sued. And that's part of it. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Getting back to the Frost Bank. Uh-huh. They have eight. <laughs> yeah. How do you, uh, do you just take care of external things for the bank, or do you work with them on all internal No, I do, I do not work with them on all internal things. They are, they are so specialized and, and uh, have so much experience in bank public relations that I assist where needed. Um, I do do some newsletters for them, uh, but they do all of their own news releases and feature stories and media relations and from time to time we develop ideas and programs. I'm not quite at liberty to say what they are, you know, at the moment. Um, ideas and programs that we will carry through with them or do for them, it, it depends on the need. If they don't have the time sometime to do it, they ask us to do it, or if we're more qualified to do it, we'll do it for them. So it works like that. But they know what they're doing. They really do. Anything else? Well, Vicki, it's outstanding. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for.